Okay, everyone have packets? Oh no, you don't have. My printer works now, so for, for the time being. So yeah, you, you got a packet. All right, Mishle 21, 13. Uh, oh, this is a spicy one, okay. Uh, this actually would have been proper to do yesterday. Actually, it would have been like, I really should have, if I had realized this, I would have like swapped them or something like that. Otim Ozno Mizakas Dal Gam Hu Ikra Velo Ye Ane. All right, this one should be fairly easy to translate. Go ahead. Yeah. Who uh, blocks off his ear. Yeah, one who blocks his ear. From the cry of the poor person. From the cry of the poor person. Also, he will call. And yeah, he too will call out and not be answered. Yeah. Sounds very it does sound very hashkafi. Okay, right. All right. So let's check out the guys. So Matus Dion just says Otem means uh, so same, like to close. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if there's a, if he's saying that like to rule out another meaning, but I, I think that's just a plain shot. Um, okay, fine. So that's that. There is no side you going on, on this one unless yours, no, yours doesn't have, right? No, no side you going. Targum says, okay, so once again, I forgot to look this up, but I got a Jastra, or Yaakov got me a Jastra this time. Dimasakar udne the lo nishma le de miskana. Okay, uh, so soccer is the only word I got to look up, uh, or football, as it said in other countries. What was that? So, okay, thanks. Yeah, um, so one who blocks his ear, the uh, lo nishma, so that he doesn't hear the outcry of a poor person. Okay, so it, I think this is implied, but he's, I mean, he's just filling in the words so that he doesn't hear, right? Af nikra lelaka vlognis ane. He will also call out to God and not be uh, be answered. Okay, so this is different, right? So, yeah, it's God. Yeah, yeah. I think that would that should be the uh, assumption anytime you see a laka, uh, so unless you have a reason. Yeah. Okay. So one who uh, uh, you said blocks his ear. It's just a translation. Yeah. yeah. Blocks his ear so as not to hear the outcry of the poor. Um, he will call to God and not be answered. Okay. So it is radically different. You're saying because it involves God. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Whereas the our pasuk, it doesn't say who he's calling out to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The first pasuk. I mean, the first way of reading it. Like I was like when I said South Africa, I was joking. Oh. Okay. Yeah. No. I to learn it in a, you know, within the, this world framework. Yeah. But that one. Like, right. Yeah. So I mean, I, the reason why did anyone else think it was Hashgaka when we read it? Yeah. yeah. Do you for a particular reason or yeah, or? Yeah, because the psukim in uh, it's in Mishpatim, I assume, right? The let's just find them. Uh, because uh, either the Mepharshim are going to bring them up or we should know them because Shlomo expects us to know. Shlomo's. I'm not saying it's not. Though. No, no, I'm I know. Could. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyone have to know exactly where it is? Okay. Okay. That's more exact than I would have gone. I think part of the one plus the Chafala. That was a joke. Yeah, what was that? Uh, uh, did you... He has all the, um, the stuff with the the ox yeah but also like a person hitting the other person and then i think it starts getting more into the uh-huh okay i don't even know if it uses the word ani uh um, do you know the lushan you're gonna get a uh, yeah that actually helped you're to pass that down to at least you can kill your with a parrot something yeah is that yeah that's i yeah i thought that, that was with the uh the gear and the almana and it could be that that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, can you pass that down to Shua? Yeah. All right. Well, while we're waiting, let's just look at the English translations here. Our score one who shuts his eye, his eye, his ear to the cry of the pauper, he too will call out and not be answered. Okay, so that's almost exactly what we said. All right, fine. Um, uh, Living Nach says, he who closes his ear to the screams of the poor. So I thought that was a. Uh, a much more vivid English translation, Zaka, right, is, uh, you know, it does, it does mean to scream out, right? Um, he too will call out and not be answered. But I think the, uh, I also think though that the, see, okay, Zaka, actually, I think Zaka is better than cries of the poor, because what, what did you picture when it said cries of the poor? Someone begging for money. Yeah, me too, right? But Zaka is not what you do when you're begging, right? Zaka is like you're being oppressed, you know? That, so, I feel like that, also, yeah. I like that much better. Yeah, so scream. It fits with what I'm saying. So, like the idea of like, you know, Zaka, like what you said, 
No, you're thinking Tfilas. Wait, we Tfilas Zaka like on Arabic Kippur or Zaka Beis Zara? Those are two different words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That on Arabic Kippur is Zayin Chaf Hey, right? Like pure purity. Yeah. Um, although Refresh would probably say that it's uh, related. Yeah. Um, okay, and then uh, so that that's living knock. Alter says one who stops up his ear to the cry of the poor, he too will call unanswered. Yeah, so I, stops up is actually, I think, a good thing for Otem, right? Because Otem, oh, whatever. I don't know the difference between Otem and Tosim. Okay, fine. So that is that. Anyone find the Pesukim in, in Shemos yet? Okay. It could be that I'm thinking of the widow and orphan one. Um, yes. <laughs> you want to not? What was the three looking for? Um, oh, no. Did I put my Tanakh back? Sorry. Um, there are psukim that talk about this reciprocal thing of uh, and treatment of the poor. I, I'm pretty sure it might not be in Shemos. It might be in Devarim. Okay. Well, while you're doing that, I'm going to look at uh, the only way I know how to find psukim, which is through the Mishnah Torah. <laughs> That's not the only way, but uh, uh, but I think the Rama probably brings it down. Uh, in Sefer Zroim, where are we here? Sefer Zroim, Hilchos Machnos Anim, uh, and let's see when it comes to. The Mefarshim? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. We don't have to dwell on this. We can find it later on. Uh, just one second. I'm just looking for because there's an uh, there's a low sase right um, to turn. Yeah, you got it. Well, it's similar. Yeah. Um, twenty six. Oh, twenty six. Wow. Twenty two, twenty six. Oh, twenty two, twenty six. Okay. Twenty two, twenty six is kihu chesusa levada hi simlasa la oroba me yishka vahaya ki tzaki live shmati ki chanunani. Or is that talks about God listening to the poor? Yeah. Right. It's supposed to. Yeah. Okay. There, I think there is a puzzle, but we'll have to find it later. Let's just start analyzing our puzzle here. Okay. Um, yeah. Questions. Uh, yeah. I mean, what's like, what, what case is the song about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is it a poor person begging and, and being ignored uh, or being oppressed? Right. I think those are the two like general categories here. Oh, well, what does it mean to be oppressed? And of course being oppressed. Yeah. Um, uh, and if the latter, how? Yeah, and how? What else? And how will my call not be answered? Yeah. How? What is the cause and effect relationship? Right. That's going to be the major question. What? Okay. <laughs> Between. Because I said my call, and like it's small, like I'm not giving to that to someone who cries out. Uh, between. Exactly. Blocking one's ear and not being answered. Yeah. I think we'll make this a separate question. Who is the poor person calling out to, right? God or other people? Okay, right. That's the other thing is uh, what does uh, stopping, uh, what does Otem, ot otem Ozno? mean also a repeat of number two just in the just other like the framework of the guy is not responding but he too right yeah, yeah correct uh who is the poor person likewise who is the ear blocker calling out to yeah who's the audience so the audience here seems to be the guy who's blocking his ear right i'm, I'm just getting desperate for questions like, like <laughs> no need to force the questions when you uh yeah uh, yeah. Um, why is he blocking up his ear? I mean, in the sense that, is he like, yeah. Is it just the poor person screaming nearby who's wanting to hear the scream? Or is it just the one who's guilty? Yeah. Why him? is he blocking his ear? Right. Good. And and I guess the question, I don't know if this is a good question. Or not, yeah. Like, what's, who is the guy that's that's purposely blocking his ear? Like, is he in Russia? Is yeah. Okay. So, so let, let's say, why is he blocking his ear? Um, uh, alternatively, what kind of person blocks his ear? And I'm saying this is a, this is a good way to say it. Like in other words, is this a uh, a character type, or is this like a decision that any of us could could uh, could make? Yeah, sure. Um, it, it seems like it's a thing. It's 
Mm. Why would the person not be able? To, why would it be that he is not answered and not that he's crying and not screaming? Okay, yeah. So let's say uh, in the, I'm going to actually append that to this, which is uh, this implies a meta connected meta uh, type thing. Um, uh, but how and to what extent? Okay, I meaning is it exactly the same or is it like he's going to get into a similar situation as a rich person, you know, or a person with money? Yeah, David? Is this specific to a poor person that he's not like? Okay, good question also. Okay, so um, uh, I'm going to put this in part of the first question. Likewise, is this specific? Actually, you know what? I'm going to put this as a new question. Okay, what is a doll in this, uh, in this context, right? So it's uh, not an ani. I mean, again, you, there, uh, unless, say the spiel, unless you are Rav Hirsch or the Malvim, then you hold that there are synonyms in Judaism, right? So, uh, so, it, it, but it, the fact is, is that it doesn't say uh, Ani, right? Which would be the normal term or, or uh, what's the other, or Evion, you know? So like, you know, is this just a poor person or a specific type of poor person or something else, right? Like, is it, uh, could it be like any person in any lowly situation? Right. Could orphans and widows be in there also? Yeah. Uh, there was another question also on the what kind of... Oh, yeah. I wanted to say, um, what is his rationale? Meaning there's his actual underlying motive, but then if you asked him, would he try to justify it? Or is like, is it something that he is just like doing or inclined to do? You know, and like he's not going like, to try to make excuses. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. <clears throat> yeah. But what was his rationale? He just, 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 just didn't want to I don't around. recall. I'm not sure. Yeah. All right. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. In the second half, why and for what is he calling out for? Yeah. Okay. Good. So I just want to see if that's going to fit into either one of these things. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I am. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna make this into a new question. And what did you? How do you say it? The why and what is the second? Yeah. Guy calling out for. Why and for what is he calling out? Yeah, and let's put this here also. Uh, why and for what is he calling out? Yeah, Ellie. So I guess I'm just looking at the why is it necessary? Is it obvious to follow? So this is the interesting thing, right? So the um, there are two general approaches to Mishle. Uh, and I say general approaches because I don't want to lock any of the Mepharshim into exclusively this approach, but there are, are approaches that say that Mishle will talk about like Hashgacha Pratis, Scharv Onesh, Brachos, and Klalos dynamics and use that like as just, you know, types of consequences. And then there are other approaches to Mishle where it's going to default to natural consequences. You know, so, so I think your question applies if this is about like reward and punishment or, or meet a connected meet from Scarpa Onesh, so then what, what's the Kiddush? Uh, but then if it's natural consequences, then we definitely need a Kiddush, we, or then we definitely need to understand how it works, because that's like the whole, the whole point. So, yeah, so um, uh, if this is Scarpa Onesh, um, then what's the Kiddush? Yeah, okay. I feel like this is probably most or all of our questions. Let me yeah, see if I could. Kind of a, a distinction. Yeah. With the, um, I wonder if there's. And the, I'm asking the question by not giving like that. Yeah, yeah. But copy the implication. But like the difference between like like blocking your ear versus like ignoring someone. Is, yeah. Uh, I feel like they're two different things. Like, yeah. Like for instance, like you could, you know, like block people off by just running away from them. Right. And then you have like someone's actually begging in your face and and you know, like would you say you're blocking that person or would you say that you're just right? I don't know, I'm trying to find another word. Yeah, yeah. So in the so it's interesting. Uh let me just see what the lesson is here. Uh da, 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 da. in the actual losa uh, say. Yeah, so in the losa say. Let's just read this just to get a basic framework. Mitzvah is in Hilvus Matnos Nim Zion Aleph. Mitzvah says, Li Tain Tzedakah La'ani Yisrael Kfi Masha Roy La'ani. It is a positive mitzvah of the Torah to give tzedakah to the 
poor of Israel according to what is proper for the Ani. If the, the giver is able to do so. Uh, you should, should, you shall certainly open your hand to him. And it says, uh, okay, so a lot of them. So there it says, anyone who sees a poor person begging and and hides his eyes from him, uh, and doesn't give him tzedakah over below uh, say He is in violation of below say As it says, you, you should not make your heart uh, strong, literally, right? Like chazak ve'emats. I don't know. You shouldn't clench your hand from your brother, the, uh, the the poor person. So there, I've been over that issue so many times. <laughs> it's it, it's it, it's it's easy. Uh, it should be over. Um, uh, and you're a Russia. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, so it uses the lesson of uh, of like turning your eye, turning a blind eye and uh, strengthening your heart uh, and then clenching your fist, you know, uh, but stopping up your ear does seem to be very, very specific, you know. Wait, so stopping up the ear is which case is when you're. He's, he's I'm just acknowledging your question. Uh, I'm just saying that, that it, it, you know, I, I think these are all different ways of, there are many ways to ignore Anian, you know, and that's, uh, that's one of the ways. Um, yeah. Um, but, but in terms of like, okay, this might get to the answer situation, but gone. Uh, no, it's okay. Oh, but I was, I was saying in terms of like the, the consequence uh, that the pus is bringing out, like, like I could see a difference if someone's like turning his face away from someone mm -hmm. versus someone just not giving tzedakah when someone's like crying out to you. Yeah, right. I think I think there could be like a, a huge knocking in it. Right, I I think so also. Uh, you know, I, I think that the um something I don't know something to me I, maybe this is also like a projection, but uh, I feel like there's uh more cruelty in the ignore in the covering your ears to someone crying. Than just walking past someone on the street, but I, I could maybe, maybe, maybe I'm just projecting. I don't know, maybe that's the question. Yeah, maybe. Well, I was gonna uh, say that there's a difference between like, uh, like you, you're acknowledging their cries, but yeah, you're still going out of your way to not like do anything about it versus just the passive non acknowledgement, you know? yeah, like, yeah, like, like you're saying, this it is, does seem more cool, yeah. Like, Acknowledge that they're in like a state of like pain, and then to just still right. Meaning, if you're going with the little thing, like you're blocking your ears, so that is taking action yeah. to yeah. to remove the stimulus that would prompt you to to help yeah, out. Also, seemingly in front of the person, also like you're not just like right. the situation. You're uh, you're sitting there in a situation right. So actively uh, like ignoring. Right. So th that's actually something I want to add to this first question here, which is um, which is does. Uh, like, is this happening in front of the poor person? You know, like you could say that like the king in his castle who knows about the fact that there are people in his kingdom suffering is also blocking his ear to the outcry of the poor, but that's not like walking past the guy on the street. That's why I think the question, what is the case is an important thing. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's also interesting because like in reality, like both, both, like I could see a, the, a mishleik way of looking at yeah. this, and then like a like a like a halakha way, like your, your, for your own perfection. Mm -hmm. So, l l given yeah. that and and Ellie's question, also, I found it more productive in my learning of mishleik to assume that we're talking about natural consequences uh, before we go to talking about uh, like hashgacha or scarfa onesh. <laughs> Yeah, that is similar to that, similar to that. But I just think it's so easy if you just assume that this is a, well, I'm getting a strong wave of deja vu. Okay. Um, I find it that it is easier if you, I just lost my train of thought. It knocked me off my train of thought. I know. I was thinking the same thing too. <laughs> that one's not deja vu, that's just memory. Um, but uh, yeah, if you learn it, it's easier to just like not be driven to find Chidushim. So I think like it's, in other words, Ryan Moskowitz uh, always used to say, if you have two ways of learning Pasuk and one of them is more difficult, then choose the more difficult way because you'll get better ideas. So let's assume that this is a uh, natural Mita Kanega Mita. Yeah. I have a thought on the cause and effect part. Sure. Uh, so if someone who closes off their ear, that then if there's someone who's like constantly, like they're very much like my money is my money and I'm not going to be willing to like give a dollar to someone who's in need. Yeah. Other people will see that and they'll see that this, like what this type of person is 
And one, they're probably gonna not want to do business with him. Yeah. Something that could happen if they see that he's just gonna be trying to like snatch all the money he can. Yeah. And then also, Fielder is not going to feel compelled to be nice to him. Yeah. He's a nasty guy. Fielder not gonna be nice to him. And then in the, in turn, when he calls out, people are gonna be like, "Who are you to be getting?" Money right. From, you know? Yeah. I'm smiling because. Uh, are you guys too young for? Do you know who Richard Scarry is? He's a yeah, a child uh, artist or a, like children's book artist. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, so the, the first time I learned this is not the exact idea, but I just got to say it because I got to give credit where credit is due. Um, so there's this book. Actually, I could probably pull it up here. You got to get the imagery. Um, uh, yeah, I think I'm sharing the whole screen. Um, oh, they they got a video of it. So this is a book that my mom used to read me as a child called Pig Will and Pig Won't. Uh, and like most children's uh, books, and you, you gotta see you guys see his expression. Pick won't. Uh, hold on, let me see. Pick get bigger. Yeah, you see you see how right. So um, yes, <laughs> very good. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So the I, basically the whole book is um, is like they're uh, they're on a farm and their mom is asking them. I think it was corn. I think it was like. Uh, she asked for help, like with all the stages of like all, all the 11 malachos of like planting or uh, not the 11, the, 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 the malachos of planting the corn, you know, so like, who wants to help me like uh, plant, you know, plant the corn. So Pigwell says, I will. And Pigwell says, I won't, you know, so they go through the whole thing. And then like, and corn's a little weird thing, because I don't think kids like just love corn. But like, at the end, they get or maybe I'm just misremembering it. It's my weirdness. <laughs> but uh, they, um, at the end, then like the mom, you know, they, they have like these freshly like, uh, like, you know, fresh uh, corn on the cob. And the mom says, who wants to help me eat the corn? So pig will says, I will. And pig won't says, I will. Uh, sorry, pig will says, I will. And pig won't says, I will. And then the mom says, you didn't help me plant the corn. You didn't help me harvest the corn, you know, and you're not going to help me eat the corn, you know? Uh, and, uh, and that was, that was the whole thing of like, is if you show yourself not willing to help, to be helpful or to uh, respond to other people's needs, so then why are you expecting that they're going to respond to your needs? And in fact, I think there's an added element because pig won't was just doing it for like selfish purposes. But I feel like when you see someone like that, then there's also an element of like retaliatory, like, no, I'm not going to give you like the, uh, the, the, the dignity of like, you know, like, like I got to show you, you know? Uh, so, uh, so yeah. Okay. I think that's, that's a, that's a good approach. Let, let's um, yeah. Okay. So for the um, hearing, right? Yeah. So the fact that he's like closing off like his, his ability to hear, right, is for me very evocative of the fact that um, he's in a sense desensitizing himself. Mm -hmm. It's not just that he's like trying not to listen to it, yeah. right? That, but it, because it's bothering him so much, yes. right? That therefore it's not like you can't, if it's bothering you, you can't close off your ears to it. So the only right. way to really close off your ears to it is to get to a point where the it, does, it no longer bothers you, right? right? And when it no longer bothers you, then it's not just that one person or that one scenario that's not yeah. bothering you. A bunch of other things that should bother you aren't going to bother you. Right. You messed with like your emotions and the way in which you're supposed to react to things. Yeah. And because of that, so now you're not going to interact with the world in a way that's proper. You're not going to respond emotionally to things in the way that you should. Yeah. And therefore things aren't going to happen for you because you're not. Okay, good. So let me just talk out a little bit more of the, the, the first thing you said, and then, and then just play through the consequences again. So we are taught. So in terms of, of who, okay, Ariel, now I acknowledge your question is good. Uh, who is the audience of the Pusuk? Because we know it's the guy who is blocking his ear, but we need to know about who that guy is. Okay. And I guess that's kind of what we were asking when we said, what kind of a person blocks his ear. So the kind of person is so I'm going to delete this question. <laughs> um, so, uh, um, I know. <laughs> um, we're talking about a person who does feel something when he hears the outcry of the poor, whether it's guilt or empathy or or whatever shame or like obligation, whatever it is, and and he doesn't want to be in that position. So the only but he can't control that. So the only thing he can do is remove the stimulus in order to desensitize himself to that kind of thing. And that is going, you're saying that that's going to have a spillover effect to other areas. In a sense, there's two ways of dealing with the cry. You can yeah. resolve it, like help the person out. Yeah. And then the cry is no longer going to bother you because yeah. it's no longer going to be existing. Right. Or you allow the cry to continue to exist. And the only way to remove the sense that you're feeling and like the uncomfortableness of that sense yeah. is to then desensitize yourself. There's a third option though, which I also want to talk about, which is, um, remaining in the state of discomfort. So why is that not a uh, an option? 
in terms of our pasuk, blocking your ear is not like you can't not hear the cry if it's still happening. No, but I'm saying that the other choice is to hear the cry and be very, very uncomfortable. Um, that doesn't seem to me what blocking your ear. No, no, I'm, I'm not I'm not saying that the pasuk is talking oh, yeah, yeah, about yeah, that. that. Yeah, yeah. In other words, yeah. Oh, do we? I guess we haven't talked about the middleman theory this year, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a theory that Ken came up with. Uh, called the middleman theory, which is that uh, Mishle often talks about two people explicitly, and then there's a guy in the middle that the puzzle is not talking about. Okay, so you so in a puzzle, let's say about the um, I don't know, Tadig and Russia is the easiest case. So Tadig and Russia are two very defined ways of approaching other people or or involved in, in systems, and then the puzzle will talk about those. But then the puzzle is usually addressed to somebody who is not yet a Tadig and not yet a Russia. You know, so I think here there's the guy who is. Really, our pasuk is not talking about two people, right? Uh, the, there's the direct opposite of our pasuk, which is the guy who is stopping the cry of the poor by helping them. Then there's who our pasuk is talking to, which is the guy who's blocking his ear to the poor, who is feeling really this poor people. Okay, maybe the middle man theory is not really the best uh, application here. So let's just go through. Okay, there's the guy who hears the cry of the poor and just is not phased, right? Uh, at all. That's like the mo guy who's most far gone. Okay. Um, extreme example uh, that Johnny wrote about when he was in, uh, I think this was in uh, Auschwitz or Majdanek, the guy who, uh, who set up a luxury suite right outside of the gas chambers. Uh, so like he was bathing in a tub while people were screaming and being gassed to death, you know? So, so Johnny was saying how like that's a different level of, of, uh, of evil than many other Nazis would clock in their hours and then like avoid putting themselves in a situation where they have to like smell the bodies and hear the outcries. This guy is just like, like either he's relishing it or he's like so desensitized that it's just not bothering him, you know? What, what, what I think he's relishing in this case. Well, what do you in this case or the Nazi in, case? In the, uh, in the, your case. In the, in the, 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 yeah, the, yeah. the Nazi case. Yeah, it's got, I, I would think it's got to be. I mean, it's, yeah. yeah. Or he's just some, I don't know, I don't know different types of sociopathy, but like, you know, I, I don't know, whatever. So like, he's sensitized means like he doesn't feel anything. Yeah, so in other words, you got the guy, the most extreme case is the guy who doesn't feel anything. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the guy who hears the poor, feels something and then blocks his ears. That's what our puzzle is talking about. Then you've got the guy who hears the poor, feels very uncomfortable, but doesn't block his ears and doesn't help the poor person. Yeah. And then you've got the guy who helps the poor person. I think those are four conceptual categories. Yeah. yeah. So can I talk about the guy who- Hold on a second, I just wanna play through Sean's uh, 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 thing here. So our puzzle is singling out the guy who feels bad and then wants to resolve that cognitive dissonance by blocking off the stimulus. Yeah. And what that's gonna do is he's gonna basically be avoiding places that would awaken his empathy, which will ultimately dull it, right? Is that what you're saying it's gonna dull it or it's gonna- Either or, he's avoiding places yeah. or he's like shifting something within, instead of like shifting externally, he's yeah. shifting something within himself in order to make it tolerable. Right, right. He right. justifies why he doesn't need to do right. that. Action yeah, his emotions, right? That, and that like just creates further justification. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was gonna say that uh, rationalizing is another way of locking your ear, maybe. Yeah. You know, like um, like uh. So I saw this. I don't know if this is true or if this is me just stereotyping Chinese people. But um, my when I went, I I I went to China once when I was in seventh grade with my grandfather, my Chinese grandfather. Um, <laughs> and uh, and uh, I there were a lot of poor people around and I was a seventh grader and like I was giving money to the poor and my uh and my grandfather said like why should you help these people if they're not even helping themselves you know and I subsequently learned again I don't know if this is all of China or if this is like certain sects or certain periods but that China is not a pro tzedakah society you know like culturally like has not been I'm not talking about like modern day commun uh, Chinese communist party China I'm talking about like going way way back uh, that like, I don't know if it was a belief in a sort of like, you know, uh, if you are poor, then like you are destined to be poor or like that's something that you deserve, something like that. But, um, but like, if you allow that idea into your mind, it will have the same effect as blocking off your ear because you're going to then justify and say, well, like that guy doesn't deserve uh, help anyway, you know, and like you, you're, it's going to allow you to be, to feel at peace with your ignoring of his, uh, his outcries, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, how, 
how does that still depend on the number? So because he then creates excuses, right, and in a sense resolves his emotions um, based on saying, oh, this is actually okay for me not to give to this person. That doesn't just, you, you might want to just apply to that one circumstance, but it's just the reality that it's not. Because when you mess with your emotions in that way, then they're not going to respond to similar cases. Or like, no, but oh, you, you, Chaim's asking, how is it that this guy's going to cry out and not be answered? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So what's so, the out? He's already like blocked. Emotions. So when he's no longer engaging in the world in a way in which like he's responding correctly to stimuli that are around him, right? then the world's not going to, he's not interacting with the world in a proper way, and that's going to cause uh, bad things to happen to him. And then... Um, so this is like not like, this is not an actual wall then, you're saying? Is it, 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 no, it is an actual wall. No, but, but you, how, how, how yeah. would people not help him? Okay, when you then no longer interact with people yeah. favorably and kindly, because you've, it's not, you're just not going to interact with this one person favorably and kindly, you're going to interact with other people differently now. So you're saying his, his kara is going to be a defective kara? It says, he's got to cry out. And then and the people aren't going to want to answer. Because him. of the type of person that they've seen he is. Yeah, because of who he's becoming right. through. And he is noticeable. I think you were saying more like what we were saying before, like they've seen him be a bad person to poor people, and now... Well, there's a subtle difference, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. into like this like monster person where... He's like a monster. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, can, can, can I try to articulate a different thing you tell me? Uh, so what we were saying with David is more of a, like this guy, I have, I've seen this guy refuse to help people and now I won't help him. You're saying that a guy who doesn't help people becomes a certain type of person, like yeah. his, his mitos change yeah. and people don't want to help a guy who has those mitos. Yeah. He becomes like a, uh, like a, 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 he doesn't interact with people fairly or kindly. So he's tell people, like, uh, give me money? Like, uh, no, he's going to be a jerk for them. Yeah, but but like uh, uh, let me say nafkamina. A nafkamina maybe is the way that, and this is not a definitive nafkamina, but the way I was saying for David's idea is if you have no like personal history with this guy in terms of like asking for help and him refusing you, then this dynamic wouldn't necessarily happen. But according to you, it would. Like, yeah, it's similar. Like, 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 um, I don't know. This is the first example that came to my mind, and I'm not I'm not picking on curmudgeons, but you know, curmudge a curmudgeonly personality, like like an old man who's just like angry at the world and just like you know, yeah, like that face, yeah. <laughs> um, um, uh, like people don't want to help curmudgeons, or like a Debbie Downer, like you know, like a not because they haven't helped you, but it's just like that kind of person. You, yeah, bad vibes. And this is this is more specific than that. But I'm saying it's in that category where you you sense either consciously or unconsciously, like this is not a person who is like someone I want to help. Yeah. yeah. He becomes less sympathetic and empathetic through this process. Yeah. And therefore, the way in which he's going to react and interact with everyone else in the world is going to be changed. Yeah. Let's go, David Yako, then Ariel. Yeah. yeah. So I think with this also, I mean, just seemingly as like I was very narcissistic and like thinks that the world revolving around him. Yeah. And then I think to that point of then people will like show you like this is if you want to see what a world revolving around him looks like, <laughs> well then either someone will act in that way of I'm going to just be concerned about me and not concerned about you. Yeah. Or they will show if it's all about you and all on your own, then I'll leave you on your right. own. Right. But that's according to your approach. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah correct. Not, right. Right. Yeah. 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 That, that, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's funny that also like the. I know I said this before, but not in this language. There is a feeling of like, I'm going to teach you a lesson. You know, it, it's funny how it like it, it expresses itself in in that way. Like, it, for, I, I'm not saying it has to. Like, it could express itself in like you don't deserve to be helped, which is also bad. Like, just because a guy is mean doesn't mean he doesn't deserve to be helped. Like, he also is a human being with needs. But people feel that way, you know. Um, and then there's also like I'm going to teach you a lesson, or like you know, like uh, like. This will teach you to help me next time, you know, something like that. Yeah, Yaakov? Um, just to clarify myself. Yeah. So it seems like this guy and the guy who does nothing, it seems like they're both in conflict, right? Like Correct. Want to give the guy money. Uh, with the guy who feels something it but just remains with the feeling. Yeah. 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 They both don't want to give whatever is money. Yeah. Uh, they also don't like the crux, I guess. Correct. Uh, yeah. Using it's unpleasant. Right. Um, so it seems like this guy is trying to kind of resolve the conflict. Right. He's doing it in a very nonsensical way. Yeah. Like he's not actually like taking one of the options and going with it. Yeah. He's just blocking off the stimulus which causes him to do it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. He's not really doing it. It doesn't really do anything. And you know, the also also in terms of a long-term strategy, 
this guy's going to meet other poor people, right? And like, okay, well, okay. Let me say what I was going to say and then refute it and then say what I'm, uh, then refute the reputation. So this guy's going to meet other poor people in life. So like, he's always going to face this problem, you know? So it doesn't seem like a good long-term strategy. I, but you'll tell me like the guy who, who uh, gives money also like is meeting other poor people and, um, you know, and, and so he's also going to be in conflict. But yeah, but if you actually like respond to them and give to them, I, that that is going there's there's a difference between a solution of avoidance and a solution of like like you know not reconciliation is the wrong word but like you know <laughs> i feel like there's gonna be a more positive outcome it's gonna make him into a better person he's gonna see the reciprocated like you know like the gratitude it, it, that that is a better long-term strategy you can't avoid the stimulus of hearing someone cry but if you respond to it by avoiding it you're just going to be perpetually avoiding things that make you uncomfortable for your whole life whereas if you respond to it then you're going to get positive feedback, both in terms of your development and in terms of the um, the uh, the outcome, like from that person. Say again. That also, yeah, that also, yeah. I, I was thinking in terms of people, yeah. Um, Yaakov, but then back to Ariel, and then and then Nikita, and then. Uh, well, and then line, the guy who does nothing. He yeah. Assists and tolerates discomfort. Yeah. Is he also going to resolve the conflict, but in like in a bad direction? So you can like, argue that that's going to ultimately have to happen, right? Or you can say that that's going to ultimately make him into the into the Nazi in the bathtub, you know, like like uh, just I think it is the the the, the nature of like, you know, people get used to things, and uh, I think that that guy like in the same way as like I don't know they say what's the someone quoted the butcher Amalek uh, Gamara like in the last month, or am I thinking of a different year? The, the 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 best butchers are like a Malik or something like that yeah right so like that is saying that if you are constantly involved in killing animals you're just going to become desensitized to the experience of seeing a living being suffer yeah, you know yeah yeah, sins, yeah? So. okay um oh, yeah, you're right. yeah, the the so i didn't hear the sunny here so someone must have quoted yeah. it yeah um but uh but yeah so it could be that the guy who is like like in that sense, uh, this maybe we have to like debate. The puzzle is not addressing this, but it could be that the guy who blocks his ears. It'd be interesting to compare what's going to happen to the guy who blocks his ears versus the guy who just sits there and like like tolerates the discomfort. Which one's going to end up yielding to a more hardened, cool personality? Yeah, Ariel. So I I, I don't know if I'm going to exactly answer the question, yeah. but like I wanted to flesh out because I was thinking along the lines of the conversation. Yeah. I have to, you know, bring that out more by analyzing the individual who, you know, who um, actually is in front of the person. Yeah. Right? Because like with him. Like I guess there, there, you got two, you know, two different people. Yeah. Like, one person is like he, he recognizes it as an issue, but like he just can't help them. Yeah. In which case, that may not necessarily be internal to his nature. Uh, the other is uh, where he's actually not like he just used to it. You know, he just whatever. I, 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 to me, that seems like the same person as someone's blocking off. Yeah, you could make that argument also. I, I just right now the, the categories are clear enough in my mind that I feel like each one should be uh, examined differently, but it might end but, up. Why should that be? Because he's just blocking himself up in a different way. Yeah, I don't know. I'm. Insane. It's on an intuitive, uh, intuitive level right now. I'm, I'm not going to try to spell that quite yet. Yeah, keep it. Just like a clarification of the question. I'm just, yeah. On the case, um, whatever exactly he's doing, um, is it like a one-time thing or is it like? Oh, that's like another question. Personality. Yeah, that or, actually. Uh, is it a thing that's a question we actually need to ask. Okay, okay which is what. Um, yeah. Uh, how many uh, instances of 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 the first half are needed to warrant the second half? Uh, meaning, yeah, does not sound like if you do this one. I mean, just right, right. That's another point, right? In terms of of God's, in terms of uh, oh, that's interesting, also. Yeah. I mean, if it's, if it's like of God, then one time, one time. It could be. It could be. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 If it's if it's natural, then it seems like you need to make this part of your personality. You know, or you just need to do it repeatedly. Maybe maybe it's not even part of your personality because if it, if it's dependent on the way other people treat you, then like this might not need to come to full bloom before uh, before you get these re results. Yeah, Sean. Yeah, just to add on to you were saying in terms of the person who actually does the stuff and actually helps out. Yeah. Just also in terms of the numbers game, there's less poor people if you help out the poor people. Right. right? That's, that's also true. Right. Yeah. Less <laughs> poor versus helping poor people. 
<laughs> yeah, but then they'll take care of you though. Yeah. yeah. So then there's less cries. Yeah, so that's true. Also, like it does create a different amount of like suffering that the person is experienced from other people. That's true also, right? And especially if you look in, clo in, in the closed system, you know, like helping the people uh, around you, then yeah, you're gonna better, you're gonna better the society. Yeah. And, and the long term people will recognize you yeah I mean, it's just you know yeah, yeah definitely yeah, yeah. and then i think that that's uh more related to david's idea of the even according to john's book because like you know you, the flip side of you being that type of personality is the, goes the opposite right you know, like you know, correct yeah um just i want to make just a side methodology point about Michelet. so this is true of many of the two we do but i feel like this is a, a, a really good one one of the differences between Michelet proverbs and uh, certainly American proverbs, uh, I don't know about uh, other styles, is like American proverbs are designed for efficiency in delivering memorable ideas, right? So like, you know, uh, um, the early bird gets the worm, right? So you don't need to think about that that much. It just means like be early and like have greater success, you know, or an apple a day keeps the doctor away, like eat healthy and you prevent diseases, you know. Mishlake proverbs are often stated in a cryptic way. Um, be, and and my theory is that one of the okay what Shlomo Hamelak says is he says it's because Mishlei is training you lahavin imre to under to analyze statements of understanding or to understand statements of understanding so it's training you in methodology of thinking but my theory is that you notice what's happening here is that the pasuk is making us talk about the whole sugya of helping people and of turning a blind a blind ear to people you know deaf ear to people um, and let's say we end up getting to an idea and we don't use all of the approaches that were said. We've now like explored a lot of different scenarios and gained from thinking about those uh, that even if they don't like, like uh, end up being correct, we've gained from that as well. So what I'm saying is like the American proverb, you get, you gain from the idea, the, the, the Shlomo proverb, you gain from thinking and discussing the idea and from what the puzzle is actually teaching you, you know? So that's why like sometimes, and we haven't had this experience a lot, but sometimes we'll, we won't figure out what a puzzle means, but we'll have gained a ton from the discussion. And that's, I don't chalk that up as a loss. I chalk that up as, as a gain, you know, even though we didn't figure out what the puzzle is actually saying, you know, that doesn't usually happen though here, but um, yeah. Okay, so can we just take stock of where we are? Okay, I, I feel like we have two main approaches. Um, and let me state them. And then if I'm missing something, then tell me if I, if, what I'm missing. So we have the approach where the reason why the guy is not being answered is because his, his decision results in a certain reciprocal mistreatment from other people. You know, he doesn't help them and they will not want to help him or they want to show him a lesson, all this other stuff. You know, Sean's approach is that this guy's refusal to help triggers a certain trajectory of character development and makes him into the type of person that people don't want to help. Okay. And me to connect a meter from God, which we didn't talk about yet. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I do have another question. Um, what about the person who's like outside? Yeah. Uh, and like he goes through like a bunch of you know poor people, but he just like from 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 the observer standpoint, like how would he view a person who does correct? Like, does yes. Cause, yeah. Go ahead. Because to me, like I mean, the the answer could be that like look, I mean, the reality is like there are a lot of poor people, and like he can't give everyone. So, so like he'll be able to recognize that, you know. Right. So it's it's actually not true um, What's not that true? you can't give everyone uh, because the uh, I, let, let's see the halakha here, uh, if I could find it really quickly. I was like, if you've ever been to Rosh Hashanah, there are like twenty four people lined up. You, uh, anyone know what answer I'm thinking of? That you're gonna get money by getting money. Uh, nope. I mean that's true, but that's not what I'm thinking. What are you supposed to do if you? Uh, so, what are you supposed to do? Uh, I don't think you're Mukhuyev to do that because then you only got one shirt and you're going to be in that problem. Yeah, what was that? A, lot, a little bit to a lot of people versus a lot to one person. Uh, that's, also, um, uh, that's also a thing, which by the way, uh, I was debating whether to mention this or not because I want to give a sheer on it. But uh, okay, I'll just, I'll just mention it. Uh, uh, okay. So my usual practice is on a Tynus to give a uh, big amount of tzedakah to the uh, Yad Yishaya, to the, the, you know, the place that supports the, the local um, poor families. And I was thinking about that idea about how, in turn, from a Midos standpoint, giving um, uh, sm uh, smaller amounts many times um, is, uh, has a different impact on you than giving once. And again, I, I wanna give a whole share on this, 
uh, from Pirkei Avos and the Rambam. So I'm trying a new experiment this time is instead of giving a bunch of, of money yesterday, I gave a small amount and I'm going to manually give a small amount every day. Uh, uh, this is with Blee Netter, but um, until my, uh, until, you know, for, for a month and just see what the experience is. So I'm giving the same net amount but I'm giving it out in smaller amounts every day and I'm doing it manually. I'm not setting up a recurring payment because I want to go through the actual process of like, you know, giving it every day. Um, the thing I'm thinking of, and I think we're gonna to have to stop now and come back to this tomorrow because I can't find the halakha right now. There's too many divarms is you're, so you, if you can't give, first of all, you can usually give like a, uh, something like whether it, like yeah, you you know, a quarter or whatever. Right. Yeah. You're right. But, but if you can't, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to comfort them with words, you know, uh, or, or express sympathy. Now that's not the same as, obviously it's not gonna have the same effect as giving them, but you are not turning a blind, uh, a deaf ear to them. You are like responding to their They're suffering. Dead, yeah, correct. And and arguably that could go a longer way in many cases than the, you know, than, than the just being passed by people on the street every day. I, I guess, I, I guess my, my, my main question really was like yeah. from the observer standpoint, like is right. there a distinction between you someone blocking themselves off versus someone Correct. going through that path and right and you know him just you know Correct. Whatever. Right. I, I think so a huge difference. There, there, there could definitely be a difference uh uh in both David's and Sean's frameworks. Yeah there there could be uh you know yeah well, let's stop for today think about it and then come back to it tomorrow. Okay, okay have a good day. Thank you. Yeah. Um is that as far as uh character